It's your boy, back with another video. Now you might be asking, Kevin, why did you build a giant paper airplane? That is because it looks cool because it has useful applications such as disaster research. A man has fallen into the river. It is probably also worth mentioning that as the TJ UAV team mechanical lead, I'm in charge of making a plane. Here is us in our early days. Yes, Shihao, it did in fact do it. I will never forget this plane, the guinea pig, one of the first planes that I built. Just like I will never forget the sponsor that made this project possible, Raid Shadow Lake. I'm not even gonna read these project objectives because you probably don't care. The start of any engineering project starts with borderline abstract art, so for that we're going to have to pull out Microsoft Paint to make some sketches. Now it's time to build our project with CAD, short for Computer Aided Design. That's when we get to take a tool like Onshape and put it in the trash where it belongs. The new plane will have the same dimensions as the guinea pig but increased by 55%, bringing the wingspan up to 87 inches. It will share similar features such as the crushable nose that can be replaced and a large payload bay. The core structure of the plane essentially consists of a plywood skeleton and aluminum square tubing. Then, the core structure is covered in foam board. This is foam board, also known as foam core or poster board or whatever, and it is basically a foam sandwich with paper as bread. Last but not least, I can have UAV team slave laborers make me things like this rare landing gear skid or this motor mount. I plugged the CAD model into some industry-level computational fluid dynamic software, simulating a wind tunnel. Believe me, I don't actually understand this as much as you think I do. The only information that I get out of it is that it won't fly like a brick. Apparently an annual subscription for Autodesk CFD costs about $10,000, but they let me have it for free after I sent them my report card. To prove that I'm a student, of course. What good is a plane if it's just a bunch of pixels? Now it's time for the painful process of exporting every single wooden face from the CAD model into AutoCAD and turning them red so that the laser cutter can understand. And now it's time for the build phase, after finally receiving my parts. Unfortunately this picture is from yesterday. With time running short, I have no choice but to wrap things up. Some lessons that I learned were- Nah, I'm just kidding. But I do wonder how many people's presentations are going to end like that. The overall build process was totally and most definitely a smooth process. Here's a build montage because I don't want to talk anymore. Here's a list of deviations made from the original design during construction as well as some specifications. The goal is pretty simple. See if this thing can fly. The idea is to put it in the air for a few seconds then bring it back down. Get it down, get it down! Oh! Oh, go! Ooh. 
Oh. So what went wrong? First of all, the winds were rather high that day, making it harder to control the plane. Additionally, being a custom built plane, it was difficult to know how responsive it would be, meaning how dramatic the plane would react to stick movements on the transmitter. The plane center of gravity was also slightly off, which is generally not preferred, as planes should be nose heavy. Finally, I should not have stood directly behind the plane, as that made it difficult to depth perceive how far away the trees were and if I needed to avoid them or not. And pilot error. I stood dumbfounded for about 3 seconds as it caught me off guard that the plane was actually flying. Amogus. We made appropriate fixes, like epoxying the snap, only for it to snap again at the field, forcing us to hand launch. Here, members of UAV and I pose for a final picture before we probably inevitably destroy it. The goal this time is to test if the motors are underpowered, and if they aren't, test how long the plane can stay in the air. Also, only a small percentage of people that watch my videos are actually subscribed. So if you end up liking this video, well that's cool I guess, cause this is a TJ Star presentation, not YouTube. Oh, oh. 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 Oh, no. Oh, no, no, no. Ah. So what went wrong this time? First of all, the airframe tried to roll right naturally. It could be caused by the wings slightly warping after the first crash, though it's hard to say. Because the sensitivity of the controls were reduced this time, it also made it too difficult to counteract this rolling. In addition, the point at which the servo motors connect to the control surfaces was beginning to weaken, meaning I might have had one less aileron, or ultimately, less control over the aircraft overall. The plane was also cumbersome from extra weight added to balance the center of gravity, and had poor maneuverability as a result of being underpowered. As I explained before, crashing can warp a plane's airframe, and the only real easy way to fix this is to build a new plane. However, this was entirely the underlying principle for the plane I designed. It was meant to be crashed, meant to be modified, and meant to be rebuilt. The cheap and basic materials, such as plywood and foam board, were chosen for this purpose, as well as the simplistic, easy to manufacture design. This means it's the perfect time to take into account all the problems encountered along the way and attempt to fix them in the next iteration. One of the biggest design changes for the next plane is that we will have four smaller motors, but have a combined thrust of more than the original power system. The two major takeaways from this project have been 1. The project was rather ambitious for these trying times. On multiple occasions, parts from the lab came out incorrectly, mostly due to minor mistakes on my part. This could cost a one or even two week delay waiting on a new part, and I would easily be able to correct and redo such a process myself on the spot if I were in person. I would probably still do this project again given the chance though, since personally I think it was worth the effort. 2. I overlooked the power systems that we reused from last year's plane. Most of my attention went to the plane itself, and I had sort of just expected it to be sufficient if the two planes were around the same size, but evidently this was not the case. For advice to future senior researchers, I would recommend choosing something you care about as a topic. Then you might be able to create something that you can look back fondly to, or not, and get publicly executed by the TJ Star Committee. I would like to give a big thanks to Ganesh, Ari, Nico, Liam, Jacob, and Srikar for their contributions to this project, as well as all of TJUAV. And special thanks to Mr. Seiler, Mr. Bailing, and Ms. Kuzco, as well as Autodesk for providing resources and helping with the assembly process. And that's all I've got for now. Stay safe and take flight.